Today is Monday, April 6th, and I hope you're doing well. Day after Palm Sunday. It was great to be part of a congregation of people and a number of servants who were trying to serve the Lord in their various places. And I just felt very proud of our staff and very proud of our congregation as you took part in waving palms. It was good to see some of the not only uh, uh, desire to honor and serve the Lord in that, it was also great to see us uh, continue to have a sense of humor, which I think is really, really important uh, in these kinds of times. And as I'm just thinking about today's devotion, I'm just thinking about the fact that this is between Palm Sunday and Good Friday, or what we would call Holy Week. And it is a difficult time not to be able to be together during this time. It is also interesting to read uh, some of the ways in which Jesus interacted with the people he was talking to during that time. He came into Jerusalem, and it, it could have been a love fest. You know, he could have talked with people and, and built himself up, but instead, he does a series of teachings that are, well, they're the opposite of that. He's not really building up his base. And one, one teaching in particular kind of gets to the heart of that. And I want to make a comment about that and then pray together. It is the teaching that's in Matthew 21, and it's about Jesus cursing a fig tree, Matthew 21, 18 through 22. Let me just read it for you. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, that is to the tree, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. And I remember doing this Bible study in a veterans a VA hospital years and years ago. And usually the guys that I was doing this hospital with uh, were not ones to pull any punches. And uh, oftentimes they'd fall asleep. It was the middle of Sunday afternoon. And we read that. And one guy just kind of, yelled out, you know, you can't do that. You know, that is to curse a tree when it's not even the time for bearing fruit. The the passage goes on, when the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, and many commentators think that this mountain is Mount Zion, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And so Mount Zion is the mountain on which Jerusalem was built. And here Jesus is making a, basically what's called an acted out parable. And, uh, you know, just to put a little bit of clarification on this, uh, oftentimes fig trees would bloom. They would, leaves would come out and the green figs would come out. And you could eat them, although it was kind of uh, not fun to eat a green thing, like eating a green banana. Uh, and sometimes the figs would fall off. And so when the, you came to a fig tree with just leaves and no figs, uh, when it was the time of figs, you knew that it wasn't going to bear fruit in that particular season. So Jesus is acting on a parable and just basically saying, you know, in order for us to be people that serve God, we have to have fruit uh, from our service. And he's making a series of comments to people, uh, especially religious leaders, that they weren't following God and weren't being the kind of people he wanted them to be, which isn't something you'd maybe want to say uh, during this time of the Passover feast. And yet what Jesus is doing is simply piece by piece, tearing down any kind of uh, uh, reliance that we had on anything that would lead to a form of thought that you could have a relationship with God without him. And so He's just saying, you have to bear fruit, and that's what's going on in this passage. But it is very interesting to see how Jesus interacts with people. And as we'll see on Easter, one of the things that he does is he, he interacts with people after the resurrection in very, very direct ways. Jesus isn't somebody who pulls any punches. He comes and asks us for everything. And as we head into this Easter week, I'd like you to open your hearts and your minds to the fact that Jesus is asking a great deal of us right now. And uh, we have to accept that call. So I'm asking you to do that because Jesus is asking us to do that. So let's pray together. Our Father, help us to come to you with open hands and to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, with an open heart. Guide and direct us so that we might be your people, we pray in this week. 
in your son's name. Amen. Have a good week this week.